Welcome to Hearsay where I share the facts, opinions and rumors I've heard. Please subscribe, like the video and share. Ever wondered when Cinderella made her grand entrance into the world of fairy tales? And who exactly brought her to life? Well, let's spin the clock back to the late 17th century, to the year 1697 to be precise. French author Charles Perrault penned the first known version of Cinderella, or as he called it, Cendrillon. This was a time when fairy tales were not just for children but were enjoyed by adults at courtly gatherings. Perrault's stories including Cinderella were published in a book titled Histoire au Conte du Temps Passe. Quite a mouthful, isn't it? This literary gem was later translated to English as Stories or Tales of Past Times. It was in this collection that Cinderella first slipped on her glass slipper, winning hearts across the globe. So, next time someone asks you about the origins of Cinderella, you can impress them with your knowledge of 17th century French literature. Did you know that Disney's Cinderella has a real name? And it's not Cindy? Yes, that's right. In the Disney version, our beloved princess is simply known as Ella. The cinder part was added by her not-so-kind stepsisters as a taunt after she got all sooty from cleaning the fireplace. It's a clever twist by Disney, don't you think? Playing with names to accentuate the character's transformation from a humble girl to a glamorous princess. So, Ella it is. Not as catchy as Cinderella, but hey, it's got a nice ring to it. What's the deal with the glass slipper? Why not a comfy pair of sneakers? Now the glass slipper is not just a fashion statement, it's a significant symbol in the Cinderella story. In the original French version by Charles Perrault, the glass slipper is a symbol of Cinderella's delicate and untouchable nature. It's her ticket to a better life, and it's the key that unlocks her destiny. In some versions of the tale, the slipper is made of gold or fur, but it's the Disney version with the glass slipper that has become most iconic, capturing the magic and transformation that Cinderella undergoes. This fragile yet beautiful shoe represents the delicate balance between Cinderella's past and her future, her hardship and her triumph. The glass slipper in all its glittering splendor is a beacon of hope and change. So remember, it's not just a shoe, it's a symbol. A very uncomfortable but pretty symbol. Ever noticed how Cinderella's ball gown has a life of its own? It's not just a dress, it's a symbol of transformation, of dreams becoming reality. And let's be honest, it's downright gorgeous. In Disney's animated movie, Cinderella's gown is a masterpiece of animation and design. The dress, with its shimmering blue hue, puffy sleeves and sparkling accents, is instantly recognizable and has become an iconic symbol of fairy tale fashion. But it's not just about making Cinderella look fabulous. The ball gown phenomenon has left an indelible mark on popular culture. From Halloween costumes to high fashion runways, from birthday party themes to wedding dresses, Cinderella's gown is everywhere. It has inspired countless fashion designers over the years, influencing trends and sparking creativity. And let's not forget the merchandise. Dolls, dresses, and even shoes have been designed to replicate Cinderella's look, making every little girl's dream of becoming a princess a bit more achievable. Who knew a dress could have such an impact? I'm still waiting for my magical wardrobe transformation. Ever wondered about the fine print in Cinderella's magical contract? Let's dive into the magical conditions that allowed our beloved Cinderella to attend the royal ball. In the original fairy tale, penned by Charles Perrault, Cinderella's fairy godmother cautions her to return before the clock strikes midnight because all her magical perks, including her carriage and beautiful gown, would revert to their original states. A pumpkin and rags, not quite the grand exit one might hope for. Now, let's take a twirl to the Disney version. Interestingly, the conditions remain largely the same, but with a touch more drama. Our glass slipper-clad heroine is warned of the same midnight deadline, but this time, the transformation back is a race against the chimes, adding an edge-of-the-seat element to the story. So next time a fairy godmother offers you a deal, make sure you check the terms and conditions. Do you know who brought Cinderella to life with her voice in Disney's animated film? The answer to that is the talented Eileen Woods. She was a radio singer before Walt Disney himself discovered her. When she was chosen for the role, Woods said it was like a dream, a wonderful, wonderful dream. She approached the character with a sense of humility and kindness, capturing the essence of Cinderella's character. Shaping Cinderella's personality with her voice was no easy task, but Woods accomplished it with grace and charm. She expressed Cinderella's dreams, her hopes, her kindness, and even her despair with her soothing and emotive voice. 
She gave Cinderella the voice of a dreamer with a resilient spirit, creating a character that resonates with audiences to this day. Eileen Woods became the voice of a timeless princess, and her portrayal of Cinderella is an essential part of the character's legacy. Quite a task, isn't it? Making a character come alive with just your voice. Who's the lady that gives evil a bad name? That would be none other than Cinderella's wicked stepmother. Known as Lady Tremaine in Disney's animated version, she's the epitome of cruelty, jealousy and vanity. Her sole mission in life seems to be making Cinderella's existence as miserable as possible. Now that's not exactly a mother of the year contender, is it? But here's the thing, Lady Tremaine isn't the only version of Cinderella's stepmother. In different adaptations we see various shades of her wickedness. In some she's a vain socialite, in others a ruthless opportunist. Yet in all versions, she's consistently unkind and manipulative. Even in the original fairy tale, the stepmother is a figure of malevolence. The Brothers Grimm didn't even bother giving her a name, which speaks volumes about her character, doesn't it? From Lady Tremaine to the nameless antagonist of the original tale, Cinderella's stepmother remains a timeless symbol of villainy. Not exactly the motherly type, is she? More like a masterclass in how not to parent. Remember when Cinderella's animal friends got their own magical makeover? Well, let's dive into that. The fairy godmother, with a wave of her wand, transformed the loyal mice, birds, and even the old horse into elegant humans and a splendid carriage horse. The mice became gallant horses, the dog major turned into a human coachman, and the bird Bruno transformed into a sophisticated footman. This magical transformation emphasized the theme of change and possibility. Talk about a dramatic glow up from fur to finery and a flick of a wand. How does Cinderella's story play out when you add a dash of song and dance? Picture this, Cinderella with a bit more flair, thanks to the musical genius of Rogers and Hammerstein. This adaptation adds a whole new rhythm to our beloved fairy tale, transforming it into a musical masterpiece. One of the most significant changes is the addition of new characters and songs that enrich the narrative. The prince gets his own backstory and a duo of songs, making him more than just a charming face. Cinderella, on the other hand, is not just waiting for a prince to rescue her. She's proactive, uses her wit to navigate through her trials, giving an empowering twist to her character. Moreover, the fairy godmother is now a crazy old lady, adding a sprinkle of comedy to the mix. And let's not forget the memorable songs that have since become classics. So, not just a fairy tale, but a fairy tale musical. That's one way to shake things up. What was the world's reaction when Disney's Cinderella sashayed onto the silver screen in 1950, you ask? It was nothing short of a cultural phenomenon. A true rags-to-riches tale, Cinderella captured hearts worldwide with its universal themes of hope, resilience, and the triumph of good over evil. The film's success revitalized the Walt Disney Company after World War II, setting the stage for a new era of animated classics. Cinderella's character became a symbol of grace under pressure, her story inspiring countless adaptations and spin-offs. The iconic glass slipper, the transformational ball gown, the stroke of midnight, these elements seeped into popular culture, becoming shorthand for fairy tale romance and magical transformations. Beyond the silver screen, Cinderella also influenced fashion, with her ball gown and glass slippers inspiring designers and setting trends. Her story has been retold in various forms, from ballets and operas to musicals and live-action films, each rendition adding new layers to the enduring Cinderella legacy. Quite a debut, wasn't it? Talk about making an entrance. Why does everything interesting in Cinderella's life happen at the stroke of midnight? Well, the midnight hour in Cinderella is a symbol of transformation and change. It's the pivotal moment when magic gives way to reality, and Cinderella must return to her ordinary life. This ticking clock creates a sense of urgency and suspense, reminding us that all good things must come to an end. But it also signifies hope, as it's the catalyst for the prince's search and Cinderella's ultimate happy ending. So remember, when the clock strikes 12, make sure you're not wearing glass slippers. What other Disney characters, stories or landmarks would you like to know more about? Let me know in the comments below and I may just do a video about it. Remember to subscribe, put on the notifications, like and share if you want more content like this.